Hello and welcome to Cyber Security. This is a continuation of the Cyber Security Home Lab project. And today we'll be continuing from our last video and we'll be installing DNS and DHCP services on our domain controller. So we'll click on Add Rules and Features and just follow the wizard and select our server. So DNS services, um, services were installed automatically with the Active Directory Domain Services. We'll do the setup today, but um, now we'll install the DHCP services as well. So you just select DHCP services and follow the wizard. Leave basically everything as default and click on install. So just give it a bit of time to install. And once it's done, click on close. So now we're done with the installation of DHCP services. Next thing we'll do is complete the setup. But first of all, let us do some DNS um, setup. So click on tools, click on DNS. So the first thing we're going to do is set up forward lookup zones and reverse lookup zones. So I already set up a forward lookup zone for my environment home lab local. And, but I'm going to show you how to do that if you want to do that on your environment. But for all lookup zones, help the DNS server um, convert from the host name to IP addresses, while the reverse lookup zone basically do the reverse. They help the DNS server com um, convert from IP addresses back to the host names. So we'll be creating both forward and reverse lookup zones testing it out as well. So first of all, to create, create forward lookup zones, you start the wizard and um, click on next for primary zone. Click on next, basically just leave everything as default. Then for the zone name, you put the name of um, your environment, the name of your domain, which is homelab.local in my case. Click on next. Leave it on allow only secure dynamic updates. This is the recommended setting. Click on next and finish to complete the wizard. So like I said, I already created the forward lookup zone, so I don't have to do that. So I'll just click on console. To create a reverse lookup zone, you basically do the same thing. You click on reverse lookup zones and you click on action new zone and just follow the wizard so we'll click on next click on next for primary zone um, click on next to all dns um, servers click on next for ipv4 and we'll put in uh, the network id for our environment which is in my case is 192.168.88 and the reverse lookup zone name is entered automatically. You just click on next. Click on next. Click on next for allow only secure dynamic audits and click on finish. So now we have our reverse lookup zone created as well. So now we can create a pointer record to point to different resources in our domain in our reverse lookup zone. So we can right click and select new pointer. Let us create a pointer record for our PFSense firewall, which has the IP address dot one. And we already gave the firewall the host name router01. So we'll put it put that in as well. So we'll just enter in the fully qualified domain name, which is router01 dot home lab the local and I'll click on apply and click on OK. So now we have a pointer record in the reverse lookup zone. So we could also create um, records in the forward lookup zone as well. I've already done so, but I've created record for the router, router um, which is our PFSense firewall and our domain controller in the forward lookup zone.
So now that we have our records, we can go ahead and test out that our DNS server is functioning properly. We we'll open up a command prompt and we we'll use NSLOOKUP for our PFSense firewall. First of all, we we'll do the use the host name and we can get a response from our DNS server. But also if we all, if we use the IP address as well, we could also get a response from our DSN server, which shows that our forward lookup zones and our reverse lookup zones are working properly. So the next thing is to complete the DHCP post deployment configuration. Click on next. Um, use the administrator's credentials and click on commit. And once it's done, we click on close. The next thing we'll do is to create a scope for leasing IP addresses. And to do that, we have to go to the DHCP manager. So right click and go to the DHCP manager. We'll select our domain controller. Click on IPv4 to expand it. Right click and click on new scope. So now we just follow follow the wizard to create the scope for listing IP addresses. So we click on next, give it a name. I'm just gonna give it the name scope one. Click on next. So we have to enter the range of IP addresses to distribute. I'm using the 10 to dot one in my environment. Also enter the subnet mask. So I'm gonna enter that right away. And click on next. So if you want uh, a range to exclude, you can put it in by adding net. I'm not gonna put in anything. I'm going to reduce the lease duration from eight days to eight hours because it's just a virtual environment. And click on next. And I leave, click, leave it as yes, I want to configure these options now. Click on next for the DHCP options. And for the router default gateway address, I'm going to use dot one, which is the IP address of my PF central router. You can click on add and click on next. Then leave the parent domain at home at home lab the local. Click on next. Leave these uh, um, Win servers. Click on next. So the next thing is to activate the scope. But before to, before I'm gonna do that, I will deactivate my the DHCP server on my PFSense firewall. So I go to my D, um, PFSense firewall, uncheck enable DHCP server, and save that setting. So it is no longer the fire the DHCP server for my for my environment. So now I activate it on my um, domain controller. So now I'm testing out the configuration with a Windows 10 machine that's connected to my environment. I'll go to the command um, the command line first of all. If, uh, if you see when I type in IP configuration and show everything. You see right now, the DHCP server shows as my router, my PFSense router, which is .88.1. As well, it's also the DNS server and the default gateway. But now I am going to re release this IP address and renew it. So it gets a new IP address via DHCP and you see what happens afterwards. So I, I'm done, I clicked on renew, and you'd see it's, uh, first of all, has identified my domain as homelab.local. And now when I go back and check my IP configuration, you see right now the DHCP server is the 200, which is my domain controller. The default gateway is still the PFSense router, but the DNS server is also my domain controller, the 200. So I can also confirm my DNS is server is working by using the host name of my router to get to the router rather than the IP address. So I use router 01.lohomalab.local. 
and you see I'm able to access the PFSense management interface with the host name of the device rather than the IP address. So finally, we can also view the DHCP leases on a domain controller. When you go to DHCP manager, um, click on your scope and click on address leases. You can see each computer that has been given it, it, an address via, via DHCP and we can see the Windows 10 um, computer right here. So today we've successfully installed and configured DNS and DHCP services on our domain controller and also tested them out. So we're ready to begin adding clients to our Active Directory domain and that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. We're going to be joining both a Windows client and a Linux client to our Active Directory domain. So thanks for watching and if you're enjoying the series, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.